Box diagrams showing intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid can be a source of confusion for students. And this is my attempt to clarify this concept. Let's say we have a 75 kilogram man. 60% of that would be water. That would be 45 liters. And of that, 30 would be intracellular, 15 would be extracellular. To represent this in the box diagram, we use the horizontal axis. So we draw a line between intracellular on the left and extracellular on the right. Starting from this zero value, we move left all the way to 30 to represent the intracellular fluid volume, go to the right side to represent the extracellular fluid volume. Okay. Then we go vertically to represent the osmolarity. For a normal person, that would be 290, both extracellular and intracellular. Now we have a box diagram. The line between intra versus extra would be the cell membrane that is permeable to water. To recap, in a box diagram, the horizontal axis represents the volume starting from the zero point in the midline, and the vertical axis represents the osmolarity. The line between I and E would be the cell membrane. In the next few slides, in order to better explain the box diagrams, I'm going to utilize different shades of blue to represent osmolarity. The first example is adding isotonic solution. In all our examples, we are changing the properties of extracellular fluid, and the intracellular fluid is only indirectly affected by movement of water when there is osmolarity difference. In this example, we're isotonically increasing the volume of the extracellular fluid, which is represented by expansion to the right and with no change in osmolarity. Therefore, the only change is increase in ECF volume. The second example is removing isotonic solution. So same way we are removing from the extracellular fluid. So simply the volume has decreased in the extracellular fluid. The third example is adding salt to the extracellular fluid, which is represented by this darker shade of blue on the right hand side. Remembering that the cell membrane is permeable to water driven by osmotic pressure, we can predict the fluid movement from the intracellular compartment to the extracellular compartment from osmotic pressure. This is nothing more than cells shrinking in hyperosmotic solutions. The shades of blue were useful in explaining the concept here, but you can imagine it is difficult to standardize shades of blue, shades of red for exam purposes. So now we're going to get rid of the color and use the vertical axis to represent increased osmolarity. Now, if you compare this box diagram to the original box, you will notice a few differences. Let's first remind ourselves that the horizontal axis is volume. The extracellular fluid volume increased by that much. On the other hand, the intracellular fluid volume decreased by the same amount. And finally, the osmolarity of both intracellular and extracellular fluid increased by the same amount. Remember, at steady state, osmolarities have to match between I and E. The bottom line is this. First, look at osmolarity change. Did it go up or down? Second, look at extracellular fluid volume. Did it move right or left? Third, you can check the ICF volume change, which follows the osmolarity change in the opposite direction. For this example, since osmolarity increased, it is at a hypertonic change, and the extracellular fluid volume increased, so it is an expansion. So it is hypertonic 
expansion. Let's practice with another example. In exam questions, you may see, what is this change compared to normal? How should I approach this? My recommendation is to look for one, two, and three. First, osmolarity. From the dashed box to solid box, osmolarity was increased. Second is ECF. From the dashed box to the solid box, ECF decreased. ICF moved from left to right. For ICF, that's decrease in volume. So overall, you have hypertonic contraction. So when we talk about contraction or expansion, we are only looking at ECF volume. So this case would be someone losing more water than salt. With that in mind, you can look at the summary chart and figure out, did the osmolarity go up or down? Did the volume of extracellular fluid increase or decrease? Okay, I hope you found this helpful. Thank you.